Today we're going to use SOLIDWORKS to go from CAD model to G-code while programming this LS1 engine valley cover. You'll see how SOLIDWORKS CAM makes programming easier than ever with its integrated environment. SOLIDWORKS CAM gives you 2.5 axis milling and is included with all SOLIDWORKS CAD licenses since version 2018. CAMWORKS powers SOLIDWORKS CAM, so if you have CNC programming needs beyond the included 2.5 axis capabilities, things like you're seeing here, you can always upgrade. You'll learn how SOLIDWORKS CAM uses rules-based machining technology to speed up programming, how these rules can be customized to match your shop practices, and finally, how we can program interactively. Here's our model, download available in the description if you want to follow along. Rolling through the tree, you can see how it's made. We'll need to machine the contour on the end of the part, the countersunk holes, and engrave our logo. We'll turn on SOLIDWORKS CAM from the add-ins area, and this will give us a toolbar and three tabs on the feature manager tree. Starting on the CAM feature tree, we'll assign a machine. You can see the tool crib and available tooling. We can choose what post we want to use. If you don't know what a post processor is, it converts our tool paths in the right G-code dialect for our machine. On our website, you can download posts for free right now. Now we'll set up the stock. I was going to use a base plate of pre-famulated amulite, but 6061 aluminum bar stock is cheaper and easier to get, so we'll use that. This also adjusts speeds and feeds. We're going to use a bounding box option and just extend that out a little bit. The coordinate system can be assigned a number of ways. We can use the SOLIDWORKS coordinate, choose from the corners of the bounding box or the center of the part, or use some custom defined coordinate system. Here in the options, we can control what kinds of features SOLIDWORKS CAM will scan our model for, and this works whether or not the part is native. Now extracting the machining features, SOLIDWORKS CAM finds the part perimeter open pocket and the countersunk holes group. Generating the operations plan, SOLIDWORKS CAM determines how to machine the part. This is based on the features it found, their size, and our preferred machining rules. You can see it's going to do a roughing and a contouring operation on the perimeter open pocket, and then it's going to do a spot drill, also known as a center drill, then drill the hole, and the countersink. This automation saves time and can be customized as I'll show you. We'll generate the tool path, then review the simulation. You can see it's pocketing inward, which would work, but we do it differently in our shop, so we'll fix that. Also, it's profiling around the entire part, and we'll eliminate that. Finally, we're not going to spot drill. Editing our roughing operation, we'll choose a 3A send mill and change the roughing patterning method. As we try different options, we can see a clear example of the strategy. We'll use the offset roughing. As we complete the change, you can see the toolpath update instantly. Another way to change tools is to drag and drop operations on the tools tree like you can see here. We'll use a contain area to limit our machining inside the sketch we used to create the model. Adding a little offset for the lead in lead out updates the tool path and now we're just cleaning up the profile on the end of the part. We're also going to delete the spot drilling operation, then save an operation plan so that next time we don't create that by default. This is how we can train the rules to match our shop practices and reduce programming time. Lastly, we'll interactively program the engraving. Creating a new 2.5 axis feature, we'll select the engrave, choose our sketch, and set the depth to 15 thousandths. We just got a notification from our file management system, SOLIDWORKS PDM, that a change has been made to the part. Just when we we're about done, we get a new revision. We'll get the new version with the whole pattern adjusted by a few thousandths, and SOLIDWORKS CAM automatically sees this change and updates. This associativity makes last minute design changes easy to deal with. We'll check out the simulation one more time and see the modifications we made. Perfect. We can make all those changes the new default like you saw earlier. It's trainable so you can capture your best practices while speeding up programming. Finally, we'll reorder the tools to match the way we put them in the machine and post the G-code out. So today you saw how SOLIDWORKS CAM uses rules-based technology to speed up programming. We looked at how we can train it to match our shop practices and how we can program interactively. I hope you enjoyed that and that you give SOLIDWORKS CAM a try. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.